Here it is, Cold Steel Cheap Shot. We're going to talk about ammunition, utility, accuracy, and some improvements that can be made. This crossbow and uh, others like this have gotten quite the popularity boost thanks to a certain unnamed German guy. As of this recording, Cold Steel's version is relatively available. Bolts have gotten slightly harder to get a hold of than usual, selling at or close to MSRP. This has gotten better, but it was kind of spotty for a while. The thing I noticed when I got them is that these bolts are basically cut down versions of arrows people have been sending through their regular compound and recurve bows forever now. Your standard, the 2.44 to 2.46 inch ID knock and point inserts will fit in these bolts. This means that you can take, where did I put it? This means that you can take a broken arrow, cut off any crack sections and make a new crossbow bolt with a little elbow grease and some parts. Oh, hello kitty. Oh. But anyway, sometimes you can actually get arrow shafts like this cheaper and more readily available anyway. Cut them down to size and make two or three bolts from them. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. You knew where the camera was aiming, didn't you? Thing you can do put your uh, knock inserts in last because you're going to want to pick how you orient the, because you're going to want to be able to clock uh, the timing of your broadhead into the angle you want it. Regular knocks actually will work. It might not be apparent, but regular knocks can be used with not too much trouble. Because there's a gap in the string latch, the knock will actually fit in there. It's not as easy to load a full knock, but it's a useful option. Automatic safety latch will catch on it to, to it though. If you sand down the knock like this, you can actually have an arrow fitted on the string with a moderate amount of security. Then walk around your target. good to go. Only really works for the first shot after that. I would just revert back to regular bolts, but it's a handy little thing. Nowhere near as cool as a magazine, but I think it's worth mentioning. One of the bigger qualms people have with this is accuracy. Part of this comes from the fact that this is just a regular D-shaped set of limbs with no real centering device other than some guidelines that you can't see because I got them covered up with tape. And it's just those guidelines and a set screw to make sure you have it, have them centered. If you accidentally bump the limbs left or right, you're going to shoot left or right. Right now I'm just using the double-sided tape to mitigate that. What I would like to see, this goes against the pricing of the whole system, but if you can make a bracket that lifts the limbs up, split it down the middle, kind of like some of your more, more mainstream crossbows, the limbs could automatically be centered, you get more accuracy, but it would probably have to be machined aluminum, which would be expensive and kind of goes against the code of having a budget bow. But anyway, okay, I have a can, 8 ounce can, about 25 paces downrange. Give it a shot. Oh, no, kitty, kitty! No! Excuse me, I gotta go get a cat from the train. Talk about this in a minute, but having a folding stock has been great. Okay, shot number one. Let's see, okay, maybe I should carry this out. Uh, I have a red dot with multiple reticles on it, so it's got kind of a crosshair or a dot with a circle interrupted by little lines. I find it's kind of handy to have a reticle with extra points on it for when you need to practice. Hold up. Okay, that's not the best shot. Go on the right. A little bit high. I think that was a grazing shot. Let's go see. Uh, that's dead. Uh, one thing I will say for sure 
Folding stock is a must have with this thing. So much nicer. You shoot, fold it up, and you're free again. Anyway, I have about 40 yards down range, an eight ounce soda can. I'm gonna see if I can nail it without having to fire too many shots. high there. I cannot see that one. I don't saw the cans getting pretty small at this distance. Right and low. Uh, I don't know if he damaged it, but we certainly knocked it over. Go ahead. For the folding stock, I took the original stock, chopped it off just before the castle nut, which is this section right here, which is basically solid cast aluminum. Then I took a UTG AK folding stock adapter, cut off the threaded section here, and drilled and tapped that into here. I put three screws in there. I could have gotten away with just the two, but I was paranoid. I had to remove some material right here to make everything fit, so that's kind of my fault, but I was paranoid. The original pin was aluminum. I replaced it with a stainless steel bolt, quarter 20. And the folding stock here is a TACOM uh, 1022 angled stock. Because of this, I can have the stock folded and the string pulled back and it doesn't, and the stock does not bump into the string. Lovely little stock. I did have to trim off about two inches to make the length of pull correct. Pull out the screw here, pull off the end, trim the carbon to the length you want, drill and tap that. I forget what drill and tap that is, but you can find out it's pretty easy. Maybe not the most serious use, but sometimes you just want to have fun. I think that's what it works great for. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.